Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here. Today we're gonna be exploring some islands, building our little huts in small islands. This is a tile laying game in which the players are going to be collectively developing the board and you are building up different islands with different resources on them and spots to deploy your little houses. And uh, as the rounds end, the players are going to take turns deploying those little houses to places that qualify based on their scoring opportunities and then scoring those victory points. The board is going to develop over time. You play several rounds and see who has the most points. So let's go ahead and take a look at how it all works together. We'll come on back after that. I'll tell you if it's a good one. Here we're going to be taking a look at the basic game with three players. These three players here, everybody's got pretty much what they need to start except one of these cards. So every player would draw one of these. Now this is the part that would be different for the advanced game. Instead of getting these cards, which are going to tell you how you may place one of your houses onto the islands and what you're going to score for doing so, instead you would be playing with two smaller decks that basically split those two halves and allow you to make your own combinations. So this is what you would make, six points, this is what you would need. Putting these two together, boom, you've just created your own card. And you'll be able to obviously mix and match these in order to uh, you know get exactly what you'd like. So that's how that works, that's the uh, advanced variant. But we're gonna be taking a look at the basic one. Every player has one of these to begin. And each round of four rounds is going to go like this, all right? We are going to flip over three tiles. We are going to take another six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll put them over here on this tile. And we've got the ships over here. If a player is uh, at the table, their colors at the table, then the ship is with that color facing up. Otherwise, it would be flipped and show a grayed out ship sail. And so that uh, that's a... Uh, one that anyone can deploy that ship. So here's how it goes. We've set up everything. Everybody's going to get two of these goal cards and they are going to, from those three, you are going to take a look at them. You are going to decide which one you'd like to keep for this round. So for example, this player is gonna keep this one for this round. And then from the other two, you can save one for next round. This player is gonna go ahead and save this one for next round, the last one is shuffled away and all the players would do this but for now i'm just going to go ahead and just leave them each uh just one uh do that one for them and they would save one but i'm not going to worry about that right now and then this last player would you know keep one and save one and then you are ready to begin so starting from the start player you are going to you've got two tiles you're going to draw one of these three tiles and again, checking what your goal would be. So I would, I would draw a tile, it gets replenished, and then I am going to play one out to the table. All the sides must match when uh, this is played. And so this player might play this tile here with all the sides lining up. And they are done. Uh, one more thing they could do on their turn, I do want to point that out now, is you could, after you do that, you could play one of these tokens that you've got to change a symbol on the board. You can either add another anchor to a coastline, and each tile can only have two, so I could put two anchors, there's one pre-printed and this one, but that's it. Or I could change a symbol somewhere by covering it up and making it a different symbol, a different good, all right? So you can do that as well. And then it would be the next player's turn to draw a tile, add one to the table. Your other option, which is not available to you until these exploration tiles are gone and this tile is empty, is landing a ship. You can land your own or one of the grayed out ships. When you do so, again, the tiles must match the sides. So if a player lands here, they are going to trigger scoring for that round. So let's go ahead and uh, you know move this forward a little bit and I'll show you how the scoring goes. So now it would be the uh, white player's turn over here. This tile is now empty. They'll be aware once it does empty out. Doesn't mean you have to land a ship. And you would, in, in fact, if you continue taking these, you just replace the tiles from the stack of tiles set aside. But they are going to go ahead and land a ship. Now, they've got two options. They can land their own. And where you land might give you victory points at the end of the game for the anchors around where your ship is or you can land a neutral one for now. 
So this player is going to go ahead and do that. They're going to land this neutral ship. They're not feeling great about the anchors yet. And now we get to the scoring. So the players are going to reveal their scoring opportunity and deploy their houses. Every island that has spots for these little houses can have one per color. So I cannot send two of the same uh, color to the same island. And for every house I deploy this round, and they can only go to what matches my scoring uh, requirement here, I will do the scoring uh, as denoted on the card. So I need to go to an island that has two temples. Great. This island here has two temples, so they're going to send one out, and this scoring means I'm going to draw exploration tokens equal to how many temples are there, and I keep one. So these have been shuffled. I draw two of those because there's two temples there. I take a look at them. This is seven victory points. This is six. I will keep that seven. This is just set aside for now. I uh, check if there's another place where I can go. Yep, I can go here. And there again, there are two temples. I draw two of these. These are worth four victory points and five. So I'll keep that one. And that is my score for this round. The other ones get shuffled back in. And now it would be the next player's turn. And the next player is going to reveal their scoring opportunity. The way it works is, for them, they must go to an island that has more of the little leaves than of the little lotus flowers. So, they check, and they are going to go um, here. That one has it. And there's a single spot there left to send a house, so they'll jump in there. And then they are going to score one point per, per leaf, plus two. So, um... Uh, da, da, da. Nope, that's not the right one. I meant in here. Okay, there we go. Uh, that one qualifies. And they have one, two, three leaves in there. So three plus two for five victory points. And they'll take those from here. That's their score. Again, they could deploy more of the houses if the islands qualify. But there is not another one that does. Even though the players attempted to change some of these symbols out there, in order to make those scoring opportunities happen, yellow put a token here, but it didn't quite uh, work out. They're in fact tied. There's one to one. And then purple's gonna go. Purple's gonna reveal theirs. It needs a temple and two of those dragon fruit symbols. So they can go here to this island. That's there. And they got a point per temple and a point per dragon fruit. One, two, three, four. So they'll take four victory points for that one. Three, four. And then they check if anywhere else there's a temple and two dragon fruit. Indeed, there is over here. So they can go there and they get one, two, three, four again. So their total is going to be eight. And they get those. They score that. And that's it for everyone scoring. So these scoring opportunities will go away. Don't forget the players would have saved one from last round. They're going to get shuffled back into the deck. And everyone gets houses from reserve. Every player has four of these in reserve to bring them back up to four each. And then we play another round with, again, placing six tiles on this stack, getting uh, everything from the beginning again, and, and deploying tiles until these are gone, uh, changing the faces and the little symbols on tiles with your own tokens, and eventually scoring again. Now, you only score that second time for uh, the houses you're able to deploy on that time. And the other ones just sit there and block off spots, okay? And that's basically it. At the end of the game, you are going to reveal all of your victory points. You're going to score those. And you are going to score the anchors that are around your ship. Uh, on all uh, eight tiles around your ship. And that is your final score. Besides all that, as I said, you've got the alternate advanced mode of scoring. And you've also got here a solo play mode that you can choose how to how difficult to make it and you will also be using these cards for the AI basically so that is in there as well lots of little bits going on a nice amount of variety so let's go back up top let me tell you what I think of the game and that is small island so let's talk about this I'm gonna tell you what I what I thought of the game uh, I, uh, I there's a lot here I like I'll start with the negatives which are very minor in my opinion because I do find the game to be a really solid fun family weight game 
So the only thing I thought was so-so was the tactics and strategy, the balance of luck to those things. The scoring opportunities in the game can sometimes make you feel like you are getting hosed. And the, the, the amount of points something rewards you versus how difficult it was to make sometimes feels off. Hang on, I don't know, I, I, I don't know if it is off. I, uh, it might be extremely well balanced. I'm just saying it feels sometimes like you got a card and you got six points out of it. And oh boy, this person over there just pulled two, three tokens from that stack of exploration tiles. Probably made, you know, 12, 15 victory points. That seems uh, like getting hosed a little bit. Everything else I really, really like in the game. And I'll just run down the things. Okay, so uh, thematic ties, gorgeous, breezy theme, really captivating. I love the way the uh, board develops. The whole thing has a real nice theme to it. The uh, aesthetics, as I said, the game is well made, it looks fantastic, it's very bright, welcoming. I think that the look here and the theme do wonders to get this game to the table, so I like that a lot. The game has a lot of variety as well, as well so the replayability is going to be high. You've got the basic game, you've got the advanced game you can play with, they include a solitaire mode, they are going to give you um, you know, the tokens that you can use to change the board. There's there's a lot happening here. So the replayability, I think, uh, there's enough in the game that it's going to keep you coming back. The only thing I would say is a small uh, dent here is that the game does not feature a real solid ramp-up effect. Once you've scored an island, you that's, that house stays there to block that spot. That's it for that. You can maybe score some that island. Uh, well, you can't score that island again, but you can keep scoring other islands Later on, if you build them up, and other players could jump into that island that you already went to as long as there's a spot for them. So, nothing builds. The first round feels largely like the last round except for the ships. When, you know, where you put out your ship and how you surround it with those uh, anchors. So, again, that's a minor thing. I do think there's a lot of replayability here. The game length is solid. It's about, it says 30 minutes. I would say it's about 40 minutes. Um, but... It does not outstay its welcome whatsoever. Each round's about 10 minutes. It's got a good flow to it. The uh, ease of play is high, even though there is quite a bit going on. But the turn structure is simple. Um, I, I find it to be easy to get into and just sort of keeps you engaged in what's going on. I like watching the tiles dwindle. Uh, and as soon as those are gone, then anyone could jump in there and do a scoring. So... How long do you think you've got till that happens? Are you going to be able to build up this island over here with enough of what you need to score this turn? The only thing here that, again, is a little bit of a, of a ding for me is that once you've placed your tile, you are at the mercy of other people to, as to when they want to call the round. I know that's fair, but it's still sometimes it can go for a while till the other players who haven't done it yet will do so, and it feel, it makes you feel sometimes like, at this point, I'm just helping the rest of you out by building up these nice islands. You know, I, I would love to call the round right now, but I can't. And so, that's everything. Again, a lot of positives here. I really found this game to be, to be charming and captivating. It's got a, like I said, a breezy, attractive game is a good way to put it, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, small Islands, I would certainly recommend if you are looking for a tile-laying game that is not just a derivative of Carcassonne, but has enough solid new ideas to make it stand on its own. So this is going to get a seal of approval from me. Again, I very much recommend it for a family-type setting, uh, or if you're just looking for a nice tile-laying uh, lighter game, you know, mid to light game. So there you go. Small Islands. Recommend it. Seal of approval. I'm Z Garcia, and I'm going to see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.